He uses uh, priceless jewelry and expensive pearls to teach us the incomparable value of the kingdom of God. He says, as a man finds a treasure in a field, he recognizes how valuable the treasure is. So to the point, he goes and sells everything he has in order to purchase the field. When, when Jesus is trying to teach about the gratitude that we should have when our sins have been forgiven, he uses debt forgiveness and says any a master had a servant that he forgave a small amount and he had another servant that he forgave a large amount. Which one do you think had the most gratitude? He says all of us have been given much by God and forgiven much by God and as a result we ought to have a heart of worship and gratitude to God. Jesus uses parables to communicate very profound truth about God's kingdom. And right here in Mark 4, Jesus uses the simple act of farming. He uses the simple act of sowing seed and reaping a harvest to explain the nature of the kingdom of God. Right, right here in Mark 4, even if you didn't know it was located here, you find a very well-known parable because at the beginning of this chapter, Mark 4, 1 through 20, you find the parable of the sower. G Jesus uses the parable of the sower to describe different conditions of the heart or different people who are listening to the word of God and respond differently to it. Some seed falls along the path. Some seed falls along rocky ground. Some seed falls on thorny ground and thanks be unto God, some seed falls on good ground. The disciples do not understand that Jesus must explain. He says the seed that falls along the path the devil comes and immediately snatches it. He says some seed falls on rocky ground and it may sprout up rather quickly but it does not have any roots or depth of soil so that when the storms and the winds begin, a light begin to blow it does not have the depth of soil to withstand the affliction. Jesus says some seed falls along thorny ground and those are people who receive the word with joy but the cares of the world choke the truth of the gospel out of their lives but thanks be unto God for good ground. These, these, these are individuals who receive the word and bear much fruit in their lives. That's Mark 4, 1 through 20, very well-known parable. At the end of the chapter, Mark 4, 30 through 32, we have the parable of the mustard seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very well-known parable as well because Jesus says a mustard seed, the most minuscule seed during that time. The Bible says it's the smallest of all seeds on the earth, but the seed sprouts up into a large and beautiful tree in which birds can make their nests. Uh, that means that even though we may have humble beginnings, do not discredit what God can do uh, with some small faith. Jesus says if you have the faith of a mustard, yeah, yeah, you, you can move mountains. In Mark chapter 4, you have the parable of the sower. In Mark 4, 1 through 20, at the end, you have Mark 4, 30 through 32, the parable of the mustard seed. But in the middle of these two popular parables is a smaller, less known parable in Mark 4, 26 through 29. This is the parable of the growing seed. And it could also be called the parable of the waiting farmer. Or it could be called the parable, hold on for just a minute, brother, or it could be called the parable of the middle period. The middle period between sowing and reaping a harvest. But this parable talks about the growing process of the seed and the waiting process of the sower. And it is the growing process of the seed and the waiting process of the sower that has sowed the seed in the ground. Specifically in this passage, Jesus is saying Don't 
prepared yourself academically and you're waiting on the degree to have impact on your professional standing, that's the middle period. After you prepared yourself for a spouse and you're waiting on God to send or reveal the person that he has for your life, that's the middle period. After you put your hard work in and you sacrifice your time, you've been generous and you know what the word says that if you sow, you shall also reap. Oh, my 
somebody else is behind the wheel. Here's my big question for you tonight. Most of us tell God, God, you're my pilot. God, get behind the wheel and drive the car. That's all good, but my question tonight to you is when God is behind the wheel, and when God is your pilot, and when God is the captain of the ship, not only do you have the faith to trust God,
greatest struggle during the middle period is simply this. Uh, keep your hands off of it. It's supposed to be yes. in his hands. Yes. The greatest temptation during the middle period uh, is to put your hands on it. Uh, which means that even when you cannot see anything, uh, it's in God's hands. Don't put your hands on it. Uh, you got to know this. When you cannot see anything in the middle period, uh, God is doing something. I'll say it again. Uh, when you cannot see anything in the middle period, uh, God is doing something. You got to get up during your middle period. Uh, Well, 